Hey everyone, I'm Tech Steve, and on today's video, I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know if you've been thinking about buying an Amazon Echo unit. So in today's video, I have the fourth generation Echo Dot and the full size Echo unit. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys just about every function they can do. And the great thing is, I broke everything down into chapters just in case you wanna find a particular feature. So again, this is not a review, but it's a breakdown of everything you can do with the Amazon Echo. So sit back and relax, and let's get started. Hello, your device is ready for setup. Just follow the instructions in your Alexa app. Hola, vamos a empezar. Bonjour. So before we jump into this video, there's a few things that I wanna go over with you. First of all, Everything I'm gonna show you today is based off of where I live, which is in California. So if you live in another part of the world, some of these features may or may not work. So make sure you check your Amazon account just to make sure these functions are available. The second thing, you're gonna to need to have a Android device with 6.0 software or higher. And if you're an iOS user, you need to have version 11.0 or higher. With that being said, let me go and show you guys how to get it set up so we can go and go through all these different steps. Also be sure to go to amazon.com and set up a new account because you'll need that login to set up the Amazon Echo app. If you have an Android device, go into the Play Store and type in Alexa app, then go ahead and download it. But today we're gonna to use an iPhone. You can see I already have it downloaded and logged in. So all I need to do is just go and open up the application. Now you might get this pop-up so you can go ahead and install the application, but I'm gonna show you guys the manual way to do this. The first thing you wanna do is press devices at the bottom, then go to the top and hit the plus in the corner. Press on add a device, then press on Amazon Echo. Now from this screen, go ahead and press on Echo, Echo Dot. Go ahead and press yes. And now it's gonna to search to find all the Echo devices that are ready to be set up. And just in case, you can press and hold down this command button and make sure you get the orange glow on the bottom. Once you see that, go ahead and press continue. And it should find an echo dot like this. Go ahead and press on that. Next, go ahead and find your Wi-Fi on the list and you will need the password. Your echo is ready. Now choose the room that you want to have it located in. And at the bottom, you can customize any name that you like. Once you select it, go ahead and press continue. And if you plan on doing local searches, make sure you put your address or at least your zip code. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set up the other unit and then we're gonna talk about the different specs of these two devices. So here we have the fourth generation Echo Dot. The speaker has a retail price of $49.99, is 3.9 inches around and 3.5 inches tall. Now the speaker weighs 12 ounces and it has a 1.6 full range speaker inside of it. Now it is available in three different colors. There's charcoal, which I have today. There's also glacier white, and there's a twilight blue. Now let's take a look at the full size Echo unit. This speaker retails for $99.99 and has a circumference of 5.7 inches. It's also 5.2 inches tall, and it weighs 34.2 ounces. Now this speaker has a three inch woofer and two 0.8 inch tweeters, so you're gonna get a much better sound and additional to that, it has Zigbee built in so you can actually control devices without Wi-Fi if it's connected to the internal hub. It also has a temperature sensor, which is pretty cool. So it's gonna allow you to use it with different thermostats and it works with the Ring brand smart lights. This full-size Echo has the same colors as the Echo Dot. In addition to that, it's available in product red. And with a purchase of the red one, $10 will automatically be donated to the Global Health Program in Africa. On the back of each speaker, you're gonna find your power input as well as a line level output so you can run over to a stereo or an external speaker. On top of the speaker, you have all the buttons that they use on all the Echo units. For example, this is the mic mute button. You have your volume up and down, and this is a command button, but you can also put in parry mode by holding this down for about 15 seconds. So if you don't wanna do the commands with your voice, you can simply press this button. What's the weather like today? In San Diego, it's 59 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly cloudy skies. Now a lot of people wonder what all the different color lights mean on the Echo unit. For example, that's the mute button. But here's a list of all the different color rings so you guys can know what it's doing whenever you see a different color. The most common one is the blue one whenever you give it a command. So when it comes to that Zigbee feature that's in the larger Echo unit, 
basically what that's going to do for you is that right now if you have smart devices they rely on your wi-fi but if your wi-fi go down now you don't have any access to those devices so with this unit and some of the newer zigbee enabled devices you can control it with this without having the wi-fi so that way you can always have dependable service now I'm going to show you guys some of the different settings you can do in the application. Now I'm going to show you guys how you can customize all the different settings in any of the Echo devices. From the main screen, go ahead and hit more at the bottom. Then you want to hit settings. And then you want to press on device settings. Now this will show a list of all your different devices. And we're going to be using the Echo Dot right here. Just go ahead and press right there. Now at the top, you can rename it just by tapping on it. And then you can give it the name you want. That way you don't get them confused. Next you have your volume, you can turn it up and down. And then you have audio settings. And the great thing about this is that you can change the treble, the mid range, the bass. And you can see the lights on the bottom changes color as it takes in the new presets. Then you can go back. Next you have Bluetooth. Let's say for example, you wanna go ahead and pair like a speaker or any kind of headset. You can just turn it on. Make sure it's in Bluetooth mode right there, and then press on pair a new device. So you can see here, it's starting to find different devices, but this is the LG PL2. We can go and press on it. Switch to LG PL274. Now that you're paired, next time just say, connect my speaker. Now this way, if I play music through here, the audio will come through here, but it still can use the microphones on the Echo Dot. So let's go and remove that just by hitting the arrow down and forget device. Now disconnected from LG PL274. So let's put everything back real quick. Now the next thing, if you need to change your Wi-Fi, you can see it right there. You just hit change. Then you can also choose different speakers. So right now it's set up to do the built-in speaker, but again, you can toggle over to Bluetooth and it'll select that anytime you need to use it. The next thing you can do is you can pair two of these together to make what they call a stereo pair. So once you press on it, you can see all the different devices and you'll just choose one of the other speakers to be your second device. Next on the list, you can pair gadgets. So if you press right there, again, this goes back to the Bluetooth settings. So if I wanna to connect to that device, I press on it. You can see here, you get a request on your screen and then you can go and hit pair. Then the Echo can control certain parts of the TV set. Now, if you use this as alarm clock, you can turn this off and on. So you can press one button on top of it and it will automatically snooze your echo unit. Next under sounds, this is where you can go customize everything like incoming call ringer, start requests. Like for example, if you want to talk to another device and at the bottom here, they have what they called guard. And this will actually make the echo unit a security device. So whenever your phone is detected away from your home and it hears noise, it'll send you a notification on your phone just by toggling on that. Next you have free time. And this is where you can go in here and schedule different times for kids. The ideal behind this is whenever kids have free time, they will be limited to certain things they can do with parental controls on the Echo device. Next we have do not disturb. You can see right there, you can just turn it off or you can go ahead and schedule it. Next we have communications and they have a feature called drop in. So anytime you wanna send a message to other enabled devices, you can actually do a drop in and send a message to your whole entire house. So for example, if you had one of these in every room and it was dinner time, you could have one device to talk all the other ones and tell everyone that it's dinner time. And next you have your location of your device for local searches. You also have your time zone. And then this is where you can change the wake word. So if I press on that and let's say I want to choose computer, give it a minute, it'll talk to the device. Now I'm turning the microphone back on. Instead of using the standard word, now you can use computer. What's the weather like today? Currently in San Diego, it's 64 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. For the rest of this video, I'll just leave that set up that way. So let's go ahead and go back. Next you have what they call follow-up mode. So if you press on that and you can do a follow-up and this allow you to do things like computer. What team does LeBron James play for? LeBron James plays for the Los Angeles Lakers. And how tall is he? Here's something I found on the web. According to reference.com, Nate Robinson is currently five feet nine inches tall according to the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network. Well, it's still not as smart as the Google Home, but they're getting better. Let's go and leave that on. 
Now next on this application, you have languages. And you can see here's the options that are available. Let's go back. Also, you can change the measurement units. So for example, we use Fahrenheit here in the United States, but you can change it to Celsius. And we use miles, but you can change it to kilometers. And if you decide you don't want it on your account anymore, just go and deregister it and it'll remove it from your Amazon account. So you can see there's a lot of different functionality that you can do inside of the Amazon Echo application. A lot of people don't even touch it. They just basically program it and move on. But if you want to get it more customized, just spend a little bit of time in the application and go through and toggle some of the things that you like or don't like so you can get better functionality of it. Another thing that I like is routines is where you can give it a voice command and it can go through a series of different things of turning things on, turn things off based off that one command. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to set up a routine. To set up a routine is very easy. All you need to do is go to the more settings at the bottom of the Alexa app, then go ahead and press on routines. And there's a few options at the top. You have your routines and you have feature routines. And these are pre set up so you can use these as well. But let's go ahead and create your own routine by hitting the plus in the center of the screen. Now the first thing you need to do is give your routine a name. Let's call this good morning. Then go ahead and press next. Next you go ahead and tell it when it happens. So let's go ahead the plus there. And here's some examples of what you can do. You can use your voice, you can have a schedule, and you can see there's some other options here, but I'm gonna use voice. So now I'm gonna just type in the same command, good morning. And that's what it looks like, but keep in mind, I did change the name of the device. So let's go ahead and hit next. Now we're gonna give it some actions. So this is everything it's gonna do once you give it that command. So go ahead and hit the plus. So here's all the different things you can do, but we'll just set up a few. So for example, let's go and hit Alexa say, and let's customize this. So that's what I want to say, and then go and press next. Now you can add as many actions as you want. Let's go and add a second one. Now let's go and add a second command. Let's say brief in here. And this will give you a summary of any events or reminders you put in there, which I don't really have any. Now let's give it another action. And let's go down here to smart home. And let's go and press on light. And let's choose these echo units here, hit next. And then let's go and hit power and color. So this is kind of idea of what everything looks like. And last thing you need to do is you can tell it which device so you can control any of them in your house. Let's go and use the echo dot fourth generation. Now let's go ahead and save. And this could take about one minute to configure everything. Now let's give it a try. Computer. Good morning. Good morning. Tech Steve. I don't see a calendar linked. To link your account, go to the calendar section in the Alexa app. So you can see it did everything I wanted. So the routine is very cool because you can go in there and customize anything you want. You can say like the word good morning and then it would literally go through there, play NPR for you. You can also turn on your lights, start up a coffee maker if you have an Amazon enabled one. So there's a lot of cool things you can do at routines. But the next thing we're gonna talk about is skills. And skills is something, kind of imagine like this. Let's say Samsung TVs make an application called SmartThings or LG called ThinQ. Skills allow you to log into those accounts and then control some functionality with the Lexo unit. So let me go ahead and show you how to set up a skill. So to get to the skills and your main screen here, you wanna to go to skills and games. And you see the first one is gonna be discovered. And this is common application that a lot of people are using. It's also broken down in categories. So you can see there's some new arrivals. Also you'll see like business finance, connect to different cars, education, food and drinks. And you can see there's a lot more in here. So let me give you an example of what you can do with the skills. If you want to have your Alexa to do like different comedies, you can press here and then let's type in comedy. So there it is, the top one is Comedy Club. I can press on that and then I can enable it. And here's some things you can do, so let's try it out. Ask the Comedy Club to insult Jeff. If Jeff was twice as smart, they would still be stupid. Open up the Comedy Club. If I wanted to hear an I would have farted. And that's just one example, but if you go back here, you can download all these different ones. Now, another thing, if you have like a smart device, let's say for example, 
a television, you can go here. And once you set up your Samsung TV, you can see you can control it right here or any device hooked up to the SmartThings application. So if you have Samsung SmartThings application with different devices connected, you can go right there. There's also Ring here, Saunas, Hue, Waze, and the list goes on and on and on. Again, instead of using these different logins, the skills allow you to connect to the different applications so your Alexa can control them. So you can see the skills are very handy and I will tell you that there's so many in there that you can do just about anything. You can set up one with encyclopedias, you can do one, like I said, a comedy club, you can do one far as uh, learning alphabets and or trivia or games. So there's all kinds of skills in there. So pull up your application and go check it out. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to set up some of the music players. And the great thing about music players is that a lot of companies also use skills for those as well. Let's get into it. So to add music is very easy. All you need to do is go down to settings and then you wanna scroll down here where it says music and podcast. Go ahead and press on that and then you'll get this option screen right here. First thing at the top here, you can go ahead and set your default music player, but if it's not on your list now, wait till you add it, and then you can go ahead and set that up anytime it's a task that you wanna do that's applicable. Now this doesn't work on every service, but if you go ahead and press this, then what it'll do is try to eliminate any kind of music that has cuss words, swear words, or any type of racial words, so it doesn't affect your children and things like that. But again, this is not for everyone. I'm gonna go back here. So down here you have Amazon Music, which is part of the Amazon Prime program. Keep in mind, it's not the full version, but that's what I use on this particular setup. You also have iHeartRadio and TuneIn. Those are radio stations. But let's say, for example, if you have Apple Music or Spotify or something like that, you can go and hit this plus at the top here. And these are your other options. Now, these are all the paid service for the most part, but if you want to log into your account, all you need to do is, let's say, for example, I have Spotify, click on it and you notice it, that it opened up the skills that I showed you guys just a minute ago. You enable it, and now it's gonna ask me to log into my Spotify account. Once you give it permission, you'll get this pop-up, going over terms and conditions, go ahead and agree. And now my Spotify account is connected to Alexa, and you can use that for any of your different service. So now you have an option to set this up as your default service. I can go here, change this. Now I can choose Spotify, for any of these services. So now when I want to use it, it'll automatically choose Spotify instead of Amazon Music. And just in case you have more than one music service, you can give it a command like, Alexa, play Drake on Spotify. This is Drake from Spotify. Play Drake on Amazon Music. Shuffling songs by Drake on Amazon Music. So it's very easy to connect your music service. Now, there are some different commands to trigger your playlist and things like that. I didn't go over it, but you can find a lot of this online. But the main thing I wanna tell you guys is that if you wanna have full access, you wanna have paid music services, you can do the free ones, but keep in mind, those have commercials in it. Now, the next part of this video, I'm gonna show you guys something that some people are just kind of mysteriously finding it, and it's about whispering. Now let's take a look at voice responses. If you click on it, there's a few different settings to here. One is the brief mode, which summarizes the different responses that you get from Alexa. The next thing is whisper mode. This is a little interesting to me, so let me go and show you guys how it works. Computer, what's the weather like in San Diego? Currently in San Diego, it's 61 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you use your normal voice, it responds like normal. Computer, what's the weather like in San Diego? In San Diego, it's 61 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. Another feature on here is called Celebrity Voice. You can actually pay $2 to have Samuel Jackson voice instead of Alexa voice. And you can also turn off explicit lyrics if you like. But let me give you an example. Ask Samuel. Allow me to welcome actor Samuel L. Jackson. I'm in the cloud, baby. Let's show them some of the things you can do. Hey, Samuel, how's the weather? It's cloudy with a chance of me. Huh? You're a natural. Hey, Samuel. Can you set a three second timer? Sure, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. How was that? There's some snakes in my Alexa. Oh, no, just Samuel Jackson. I guess that's cool, you know, if you like Sammy, just go ahead and pay the two bucks and he can be your, your new voice. So 
Not sure if I'm gonna do it, but it is an option. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys how to do drop-ins. So uh, that allows you to take one of your devices and talk to a bunch of them that's like in your house. So you can say like, good morning or anything you like. Also, there's a way you can make phone calls with this and I'm not gonna show you guys on that video. And the main reason is once you set up the call function, it's kind of hard to disable it without getting uh, Amazon involved. So I just left it active. But I did make another video about that. If you guys want to check it out, I'll leave a link over in the description so you guys can check it out. But uh, let's check out the communication. To do this function, you want to go down to settings and communication. And this is what you can use to call people. Now, if you have an AT&T account, you can go ahead and log in right there. Or a Skype account, you can call directly. Now, if you want to call other Alexa devices, you can set it up right there. And the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is called Enhanced Features, so I can show you how you can do drop call. And drop call allows you to create a two-way communication between two Alexa devices. Now, I'm not sure if you can use this outside of your home, but I know it will work inside of your home. So what you wanna do is go ahead and turn it on. Now that it's enabled, let me show you guys how it works. Computer, do a drop-in call. Do you want to drop in on text Echo 4? Yes. Okay, dropping in. And now, now, now you can see I'm on speakerphone with the other device. Computer, stop drop in. And this is a great feature to tell people that it's dinner time or lunch time or anything you like to communicate to the other device. Now, if we go back here, the next one we have is the calling preference. So you can see I already have it set up to make phone calls with Alexa. So that drop-in feature is pretty cool, but I'm pretty sure someone's gonna be like, I wanna disable this because it's driving me crazy. Someone keeps calling me from the other room and I'm trying to watch TV or play my video game. Anyway, uh, next I'm gonna show you guys how to control like a Fire TV. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use an Amazon Cube, which I'm playing right here to show you guys some of the functionalities you can do and how to connect them so you can control it with your voice. Now to control an Amazon TV Fire Stick or Cube is very easy. All you need to do is go in down here to settings and then you wanna scroll down to where it says TV and video. Now if you're looking for TV schedules, you can get it here with some providers, but I will tell you it doesn't connect to some services like YouTube TV, which I use. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and click on Fire TV and then you wanna click on link to your Alexa device and it'll give you a list of the different compatible Fire TVs. Today we're gonna to be using the Fire TV Cube. Even though it has Alexa built in, I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. Then go ahead and press continue. And then you wanna choose your Alexa device that can control it. Let's go ahead and use the fourth generation one and hit link. Now those two devices are connected. Alexa. Play boys on Fire TV. Getting the boys from Prime Video. Alexa. Paul's Fire TV. Alexa. Play Fire TV. Okay. Alexa. Look up the latest movies on Fire TV. Getting movies from Fire TV. And here's some other commands you can use to control the Fire TV. So I guess it's a good feature to have for some people, but for me, I tried to use it in real time and I've tried it on Google as well. And it just kind of gets annoying every time you want to you know, get the pause or play or what have you, you gotta use the call word every time. So it's kind of annoying, but uh, you can always use this thing called a remote control. Why not? So there's a few other features that uh, they have an application. Let me go over that. And then uh, we're gonna get into a few more things. I know it's a pretty long video, but it's a few more things at the end. So let's do it. So I showed you guys the most important features, but there's some other settings in here that you can go check out. One, you have news here, and if you go click on edit, you can add all these different networks of your favorite news channel. There's another feature here called commute, and with this, you can set up your home address, any stops you need to make, and your work address, and you can give it this command right here, and you can also make it part of your routine. So for example, if you wanna just get up and make it part of your good morning feature, then it will include that information as well. The next feature is sports, if you click on it, can add your favorite teams you can hit the plus up here and then you can search for teams and just doing a quick little search here you can see it does have soccer it'll have baseball and some other features including basketball the next feature is calendar and emails if you press on that 
You can then log into these accounts. So whenever you give it a command, it can also read your calendar. So you can easily add more events to your calendar anytime you like. Now you can add a list here. I don't think that's that important. You can add reminders. You also can do timers like computer, set a timer for 10 minutes, computer turn timer off. Then here's the guard feature. So when you enable this, the way it works is whenever you leave your house, so if you have it on your phone where you leave your address, it'll automatically turn this feature on. It can automatically turn on your lighting that you want automatically if you have smart lights. You also can set up smart alerts for smoke detectors and alarm detectors, and you have glass breakage, but these will require, but you'll need to buy these different smart devices to get that to work. You also can go down here and set up your home address. And these are some quick demands if you don't want to use GPS in your phone. You can just say, I'm leaving or I'm back home and it'll enable it or disable it. The next feature you have is hunches. Under hunches, this allows Alexa to help you remember to do things. For example, if you turn on your lights with a smart device every day, it's gonna eventually tell you to turn on that light or lock the doors just in case you don't do those features. But again, it'll start remembering your patterns. So that's something that you guys can turn on, but it's completely up to you. It also can detect like thermostat, lighting, and more. Next, you have device discovery in case you want to know that you have a new device to set up like that pop-up I showed you guys earlier. You also can use Alexa Photo. You can download that from the App Store and you can upload photos that you can show on your display. And then you have this other one called Care Hub. So when you click on it, so this allows family members to support loved ones by using the Care Hub. You click on it, get started. And this is kind of like that emergency alert. So if someone needs help, they can use Alexa to reach out to you. You'll need to go ahead and set up some different alerts and you also need to add them to your contact list so they can contact you whenever alert or some type of event is happening. All you need to do is just go through the rest of these steps here, set it up and make sure the device they have gives permission and you're good to go. So with everything going on in the world, this seemed like a pretty good function. Now and there's probably some logistics. You gotta go over the house and set it up to the Wi-Fi and all that stuff, but you know, the build to have another option for loved ones, I think is a pretty cool feature. Um, now I'm gonna talk about how to set the speaker ups in groups. For example, if you had three of them in your living room, if you had two of them in your bedroom. So uh, let's do it. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to set up groups. So if you go ahead and press devices, you can see there's some groups already made. And the whole thing about groups is that, let's say for example, you have two Echo devices in your kitchen, you can add them to that same list. So if I press on kitchen, you can then press edit and then you can add all the devices and they will pop up on your kitchen list. Once you do that, you can save it. But if you don't like where you originally set it up, you can hit the plus. Then you can press add group. Then you can create a new room and let's press next. And again, you can customize it at the bottom and I'll just call this test. Once you have the test selected, hit next. And then you can choose all the different devices that you want to add to the test. You can also add a fire device, press next. Now here's my new room called test. And if you need to change around your devices, just press edit and uncheck the boxes that you don't want. Press save and now that group is updated. Now you can see test is on the list. I can press on it. You can also hit edit again. And if you wanna get rid of it, just press the trash can and delete. So that's how you set up the groups. But the fun part is, is whenever you set these up in multi-room and then do a party, plan these throughout your whole entire house. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up and a quick little demo, copyright reasons, I'm gonna lower the volume, but you can play these throughout your house. Now you have to use a streaming service. So if you're trying to connect Bluetooth, it's not gonna work because it's, what it's gonna do is gonna take like uh, Spotify and it's gonna stream a separate signal, all your devices so they all can play together. And there's a few of the music player it works with. I don't have the master list, but let's go and check it out. To set up multi-speaker audio under devices, you wanna hit the plus at the top. Then we're gonna go ahead and choose combine speakers. Today, I'm gonna show you guys multi-room music. You also can do home theater where you can have like a left and right and use the Amazon subwoofer. And the third way is you can pair two speakers and use a subwoofer if you like. So back to multi-room, go ahead and press on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and add all these different devices. Once you check on them, go ahead and press next. And then you can give it a name to trigger the different speakers. So let's go ahead and say party time. Once you get that in, go ahead and press save. And give it about a minute or so to set up all the different speakers. Computer, play Stevie Wonder, happy birthday on party time. 
Happy Birthday by Stevie Wonder from Spotify, playing. Stop music. Happy birthday. So I really love that song. Stevie Wonder is a great artist. So um, now I'm going to show you guys how to set up Bluetooth. So I showed you guys how to do the music player. Now we're going to show you guys how to make these a Bluetooth speaker so you can play your phone audio through it or another source like your YouTube videos. To set up as a Bluetooth is very easy. All you need to do is under your device settings, choose Echo Alexa. Then you want to choose the device that you want to use as a Bluetooth speaker. In this case, I'm going to use Echo Dot fourth generation. Then I'm going to press on Bluetooth devices. Now press on pair a new device. And once it starts, go into your Bluetooth settings or your smartphone. Now you can see that it found the Echo Dot. I can press on it. Now connect it to Bluetooth. And that's pretty much it. And if you go back to the application, you can see it's right there. And you have all the options to disconnect or forget device. Now I showed you guys a lot of functionality of these speakers, but the question is how do these new models sound? Now I'm not gonna compare them against the old model cause we're moving forward into the future. Let's do a demo and I'm gonna compare them against each other. Let's go. Man, I had to give it to it. This new echo sounds good. The dot sounds decent, but the echo unit stings bassy. My microphone picked up a lot of boom in this room. Um, maybe one day I'll get an isobaric chamber to put everything in to do my demos on, but it's worth it if you like sound quality, for sure, 100%. Now, there's another thing I wanna talk about here. Amazon's coming out with this new feature called Sidewalk. Now, here's the idea behind it. If you have a Wi-Fi connection and you're trying to, you know, like track your pet leaving the yard or, you know, like having lights out, you know, really far from your house, normally Wi-Fi wouldn't reach that far. So Sidewalk is going to be a way you can combine your house or your network and your neighbors to create this large network. Uh, maybe it'll work, but uh, I know people are really big about privacy, so... I don't know, there might be some loopholes, might not be, but we'll see how that goes when they release it. But it's called Amazon Sidewalk if you wanna go check it out. But that concludes my video. I hope you guys learned just about everything you need to know about these Echo devices. And if you have one now, go try out some of these functions that I showed you guys on this video. I appreciate it for watching my videos. I appreciate you guys for subscribing. And I can't wait to do my next series of videos for you guys. So. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you go and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys on my next video. Peace.